Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Katherine Raker of The Chef You and I. You know, during the winter months um, and going even into spring, sometimes we want something to feel warm. And, you know, I love beef stew, especially with wine, and wonderful vegetables. So we have a great, wonderful meal for you today, which we're going to prepare. And I actually went out to the store and bought, they had a lot of beef on sale I bought two round roast and I got a really good deal on it. And so I've decided to take one of the round roast and cut it up and use it in our wonderful stew. So here's what we're going to do. We're, we're cutting it up and we're making it into cubes, which this is so simple with this wonderful knife I have. And then we're actually going to um, take our... Um, our olive oil added to the hot pot, and we're doing everything in the hot pot today, which I actually love this hot pot. And this is about a pound and a half to two pounds of meat. And um, it makes great stew. And we'd made a wonderful roast over the holidays. And uh, so anyhow, I'm gonna do this first, and then we're gonna put the saute on. And then we're going to saute and get it a little hot. And then we're going to brown the meat inside of the hot pot. And then we're going to do our vegetables and put everything together. And guess what? This only takes 35 to 40 minutes once you've sauteed everything. And then you turn it on the pressure part of the, of the hot pot. So, you know, this could be an easy family recipe for a Sunday or even during the week. Or you could make it ahead of time. And then what you could do it is, is have it for dinner. I like to do that during uh, the winter months or even when I'm really busy with work. And a lot of moms out there, you know, they're really busy. And so what I do sometimes is on Sunday, I make a lot of different things and then we have meals all week long. And if it's just you and your husband, it's, it's a simple meal and you could have leftovers as well. So here we go. And this looks almost like almost two pounds here and then I can save the rest of the meat for something else and we'll do that and I'm going to cut that that uh, fat off of there okay got that and maybe maybe we'll use all of it how about that because I'm going to cut that off of there because we are going to and this will really tenderize this meat by the way and you could actually double this recipe, and then you would have it, you can freeze it, and then have it, you know, during the month, whatever. I mean, a lot of mothers years ago used to make wonderful things once a week, and then um, they'd have it for their family. So I'm cutting off that fat. And I love this knife. It's so great. And... So we'll do that. And, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to freeze and make things ahead of time. And, you know, you can go to our website at The Chef You and I and get all of our recipes that we do. So we're almost done here. I'm going to turn the saute button on right here. And we're going to get that hot. As soon as, uh, and we're going to put some olive oil in there in just a second. Okay, I'm just finishing this meat up. And then I'm going to take my olive oil and it calls for, actually, in my recipe, about a tablespoon of olive oil. But I'm going to use two because there's so much meat. So two tablespoons of olive oil. And we're going to let that get really nice and hot. And then we're going to add the meat to it. And 
So once we do that, right, we'll be able to brown the meat inside, inside the actual hot pot. We'll just take a second. Okay, we're back. And now that the wonderful olive oil is starting to sizzle, um, we are gonna put the beef in there. And I put salt and pepper onto the beef, right? And I love pepper, so I'm gonna put a little bit more pepper on it, right? And then we're gonna start actually putting Ooh, I can hear that sizzle now. All right. This is going to be a great beef stew. And you want to brown it on both sides of the beef. And then, then we turn it off. And then we have all of our, by that time, we have all of our vegetables done ready and we're going to cut them up we're going to peel and cut them and then gradually go through this whole thing so i just need to put this in here hold on oh this smells delicious absolutely so this will make enough for actually it'll make enough for two meals when i'm finished with it and if it's just you and your husband and I and I want to get something to to move it around a little bit and I'm going to use this and it's actually starting to brown right now and once it gets brown totally brown then you're going to uh, change the setting and um, you, you can do this you know you could have done this in an open pot but it's so lovely to be able to do it um, in one pot instead of having two or three, you know, you got a lot of dishes that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this uh, particular board and clean my knife uh, so that actually I can bring my other board over and, and cut up my vegetables. So I'm taking this board out because, and you want to make sure your hands are clean and that's it. So I'm going to take my gloves off. My hands are clean under my gloves. And now what we have right here is what we're going to make the stew with. You need at least a, actually, um, a 16 ounce or one pound, one pound of carrots. And I bought the carrots that are already, um, that are already ready to, um, they're scrubbed and they're peeled. And then I'll cut all those carrots up and we'll add those in just a minute. But in the meantime, while we were watching this, we can actually prepare um, our, our carrots, cut our carrots and our onion up, and also peel our potatoes and get them ready to go into the, into the actual uh, pot once the, the meat is browned. I've turned over the meat once, and here we go. I'm just gonna get the carrots out here, and we're gonna start cutting them. So we're gonna take a little break, and we'll be right back. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and with our beef stew, we're gonna bring the camera over and you can see exactly what it's supposed to look like before you put the beef broth in it. And it's actually really, really good. I can't wait. Uh, you gotta scrape it, but we're gonna add the, we're gonna add the uh, wonderful beef broth to it now. And I'm gonna actually put the beef broth in it. And you use about two, two and a half cups of beef broth to this and that was two cups and now we're going to add another half a cup to it and if you want to add uh, some concentrate beef concentrate to it you can and then also a little later on before I actually put in the rest of the vegetables I'm going to add some red wine to it so let me go up let me go ahead now and we're going to get everything prepared here we're going to move all this away so you can see what I'm doing, right? And we're gonna cut up an onion and our potatoes and our carrots because everything's looking good inside that, that right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up my onion and 
I'm going to move all that out of the way. Does that look good? Okay. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. And we're going to cut the onion. And I love onion. I know you do too. This is a large onion. And we're going to cut it up. And then we're going to add our potatoes and our carrots. And we're going to do mushrooms. And I love mushrooms in my stew. I don't know about you, but we're going to do that. So I'm going to slice all the, the onions up. I'm ready to go into the actual uh, beef stew. And, you know, I've been making beef stew since I was, I was really young. My mom loved to, to teach. She used to have Girl Scouts, and she used to teach us how to make everything. My first dish was a meatloaf. And so these are simple things, especially with hot pots and slow cookers today. You can do a lot in a very short amount of time. So let's see how we're doing on this. Um, and looking good. So actually, I'm getting all of it together here and I'm scraping the bottom of it because when we did that, you want to get all the brown bits from the bottom so it doesn't stick and we don't want it to stick so let's do that so i then i'm going to cut up my potatoes and um my husband loves potatoes i love potatoes and actually they're really good for you actually um a lot of people say don't eat potatoes but i have a baked potato at least once or twice a week. I just, you know, cut down on, have more fish. And we're going to be doing a lot more fish dishes this year than we've ever done before, since I love fish. And it's really, really, really good for you. And I don't know, I know we've done a lot of shrimp dishes. We're going to do oyster this year. We're going to do crab and calamari for the first time which will be great. I love calamari. I hope you do too. And please send in your recipes to Catherine Raker, the chef you and I, and I'm going to give you my post office box. It's P.O. Box 023, and that's Cleves, Ohio, 45002. We'd love to have you on our show, and we'd love to feature your recipes. So please send them in. because And if you've got a recipe that you want to make healthier, you know, the Chef You and I show is supposed to be a healthy cooking show, which we do a lot of healthy cooking. And, and then we take recipes and we create them to make them healthier. So um, anyhow, and then you can get all of our recipes on the Chef You and I. You can print them out, share them with your family. Okay, so now I have everything that I need. And I'm going to cut my carrots up last. But what I'm going to do now is... The beef is tender, I think, and it's got that hearty broth. So what we'll do now is um, I'm going to add all the ingredients like the Worcestershire sauce and the wine and everything else to the mixture. So let me do that. And I'm using, uh, I've used uh, a wonderful red wine that I'm adding to this. It's about a cup. And then I want to add my Italian seasonings, and you don't have to use Italian seasonings if you don't want to, but I just think it makes it really nice. So I'm going to use um, a, I think it's about a teaspoon or so of uh, the, excuse me, of the Italian seasoning to this, and we'll do that, and just do this, a little bit of that. So this is really going to add to maybe another little bit of it. So since I, you know I don't use garlic, uh, we're using more onions in this recipe um, to make it better. They usually, you can use three cloves of garlic, minced garlic in this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm adding everything to it as we go through this. So just a minute. I'm going to add my onions now. Okay, add your onions. And you can add your other ingredients to it as you go. And I like to do that because it makes it better. It mixes in easier. So then we're going to add, besides that, we're going to add a, um, actually some tomato sauce or tomatoes. And they're right here. And that's about two cups. Add that. And that's really going to be good. Um, also, you want to add your potatoes. 
and this is really looking good. And you can make all kinds of different things. I'm going to make um, for you, um, you know, for Mardi Gras. My my wonderful daughter lives in in New Orleans, and we're doing a whole Mardi Gras show. And you could add a little bit more liquid to this if you wanted to. Now, see how that, nice that looks. Now I'm going to add. I'm going to cut up some. I still have got another potato. And I'm going to cut this up real quick and put that in. And I like kind of bigger chunks, right? And so anyhow, we'll do that. And then we'll do our wonderful carrots. And, you know, if you don't like carrots, use parsnips or something else. But see, these are already peeled. So just you could even add them whole. Uh, do some chopped up. And, you know, some of them are small enough that you don't have to. It's a lot of carrots. I hope you like a lot of carrots. Some people do and some people don't. You don't have to use a full bag of these if you don't want to, if you just want to uh, make it look like you've got some color in it. Uh, you could also put, I don't know, I like to use all kinds of different vegetables. I could add some um, corn to it. I could add some other stuff. Oh, I'm going to add the mushrooms in a minute. And, and by the way, you don't want to wash your mushrooms. You want to wipe them off and with a, with a cloth and then add them to your recipe. So don't soak the mushrooms because you're not supposed to. And so anyhow, that's it. So I don't know. It looks like I got enough carrots in there. I'm, I'm just going to use about a half a bag. So we'll save the carrot, the other carrots actually for for a salad I'm going to do. How about that? So we'll save that. So we'll move those over and then we'll bring the mushrooms in. And what you need to do with the mushrooms actually is I have a wet cloth here. You just wipe them off like that. Pretty simple, huh? And then we're going to take this part off of the mushroom and then I'm going to chop that in half and then just throw that in. So, um, and it call, you know, when I do it, I use about a pound or a pound and a half in my recipes. And since, since we um, actually um, made this re recipe almost double with the meat, you want to add about maybe half of these mushrooms, right? So anyhow, I love doing this. This is a lot of fun. And since it's cold and rainy, you want to have you want to have something that's really going to taste good, especially and especially if any of your family members are sick. After they get sick, they need to get, you know, energized again. So this is a good way to do it. And it's so healthy. And that's what I love about stew. And I grew up, and if you're from a big family, you'll have lots of beef stew. You'll have lots of vegetable soup. I grew up with that. I make a homemade vegetable soup as well. And my kids loved it. And some of these button mushrooms are going to leave them whole because some of them are really small. So you could do that. And then in a minute, we are going to turn on the pressurized part of the hot pot. And we're going to cook this. And it doesn't take very long, actually, to, to make this wonderful stew. So I'm just finishing up the mushrooms. And you just get the, just kind of get the dirt off of them, right? or whatever that is. And I don't know about you, but I love mushrooms. But you don't have to use them in this. You can use something else. Some people like other root uh, vegetables. And um, because I'm serving this to my husband and a group of people, um, I'm doing it this way instead of putting parsnips and other things in it. So there we go. I'm not going to use these. Um, and we'll go from there. So we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to show how we actually seal the hot pot and put it together. We'll be right back. We're back, and now we're going to show what the actual stew looks like before we put the hot pot top on and put it on uh, to cook it under pressure and it cooks for 35 minutes. So now I can see what it looks like. I'm gonna put the top on um, 
and we're gonna put the top on like that and then we're gonna push it over to where it says closed now we're gonna hit the pressure button on the on the hot pot and we're gonna look to see where it says beef and we're gonna go down to beef right there and then we're gonna actually touch this and it'll start cooking okay we're gonna take you can see that and when it turns yellow okay now you can see that it's yellow and it's starting to actually cook so you don't want to touch it and when we get ready to undo the top you'll have to release the pressure which is up here and you'll, we'll go through that with you okay when we come back but we're gonna let that go ahead and cook and in the meantime we're gonna take a short little break and we're gonna come back and we're gonna make our persimmon pudding cake which if you've never had persimmons before they're just delicious and it's a wonderful pudding cake you'll love it we'll be right back we're back on the chef you and i and i love this wonderful persimmon pudding cake and that's what we're going to make and persimmons are out right now and so i'm going to show you exactly what you have to do to make this wonderful cake i made it years ago i haven't made it for a while and i just saw the persimmons and i thought you know this would be exciting to do on our show so i have actually mashed some of the persimmons are are not mashed but i've peeled them. I'm going to show you how you peel the persimmons, but we're going to mash these persimmons because they have to be kind of soft, you know, they have to be mashed. And you want to try to find some that are actually really soft. So this is what a persimmon looks like. And this is a certain type of persimmon. And we'll have this on our website so you can see it. And they're actually kind of funny looking, funny looking actually. Um, fruits. So um, I'm going to peel off the peeling real easily with my little knife and then you're going to use the whole pulp out of this which and this one's kind of soft so it makes it kind of easy to, to do right and you can see that I'm I'm not taking very much I'm not trying to get the pulp I'm just trying to get the the peel off so um, they're orange the way they look and they're pretty cool. And then what I usually do is I take this little piece out at the bottom of it. And then I'm going to cut it up and we're going to mash it in the, with a masher. Or you can do it on a food processor or whatever. You need about two cups of um, the mashed persimmon. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the bowl. And this is, like I said, it's a little messy. So we're going to wipe our hands off and then we're going to actually scrape up all this stuff real quick and put it in our trusty bag well and that'll be easy and then uh, we'll mash them up and then you're going to do your dry ingredients first in the, the cake and it's actually a cake when it looks like it's a little it's a pudding cake but it's really a cake and it's about maybe an inch or two high okay and it turns out really nice. And you can either use it with wonderful whipping cream or you can actually with whipping cream or ice cream. And so we're making this today because we want to have a really nice meal, but not real heavy. And the, the um, actual um, persimmon cake isn't real heavy, so it makes it nice. And so then after this, we are going to... I love this. We are going to make our wonderful salad to go along with our beef stew. So it's a nice little family meal to have like on a Sunday or Saturday. So I think I have probably right here about two cups. That was four persimmons. Okay, so we'll measure that out and we'll do that right now. So here's a half a cup. Okay, so here's a cup. And there's another cup here. So we have two cups of the, the pulp. And that's exactly what we want it to look like. Okay, we're gonna take this away and I'll be right back. We're back and we're gonna put our dry ingredients up our persimmon pudding cake. And that would be your flour, your baking powder, your baking soda, your salt. And, and then we'll put the, 
the wet ingredients together and then we mix it all together. So just a minute. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, um, it's two cups of, I, like I said, the um, persimmon pulp, but it's a half a cup of sugar. So I've already measured a half a cup of sugar here. Okay, and then we're gonna do, we're going to add in a cup and a half of flour. One and a half cups of flour. That was the half cup and here's the cup. And we're gonna put that in there. And then we are actually done with this and we'll put that aside. And then what we wanna do is we wanna add all of our dry ingredients and that includes our uh, powder, our baking powder, our baking soda, our salt, and all of our uh, dry ingredients, the ginger, the allspice, and the cinnamon, right? Got one teaspoon of baking soda. We have one teaspoon of baking powder. Okay, and then we have two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, which is right here. And that's the ground cinnamon. And so we have, let's do it over the bowl. That'd be easier. That's one. And then two, not quite, two teaspoons of cinnamon. We have a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. There's a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. One teaspoon of ginger. And um, we have allspice, one teaspoon of allspice, which is right here. And we'll do this. One teaspoon of allspice. This is really smells good. I gotta tell you, it smells delicious already and we haven't even put the wet ingredients in yet. So we're going to kind of put that together, kind of not sift it together, but take a fork or whatever, a spoon, and just combine it all together because you're, what you're gonna do in a minute, right, is you're going to add your wet ingredients that we're gonna put together and then we're gonna add them into the dry ingredients. So here's this, you know, that looks like this when we're done with it right here. And then I need another bowl. And we're gonna use, we're gonna do the wet ingredients. So let's take a little break here and I'll put all this stuff back and we'll be right back. We're back and we're adding actually all of the wet ingredients together and that is the pulp of the persimmons. That's the first thing. And that's two cups of persimmons, um, the pulp of the persimmons, the milk, and four eggs. And then we're gonna mix that all together. And then I'm gonna add the butter in at the end. And well, that'll be wonderful, because you don't wanna put hot butter on top of your eggs. You don't want them to become scrambled, right? So you want that to cool off a little bit. So we have all that. Those are the four ingredients that I need. And then I'm going to actually beat this a little bit and then add it in slowly to, to my, um, add it in slowly to my dry, dry ingredients. We're back and what I wanted to say is you add the dry ingredients slowly into the wet ingredients, okay? But I'm gonna add the actual butter into the dry ingredients right now and I'm going to mix it. I had mixed it vigorously before. So what you wanna do is you just wanna blend it a little bit. Hold on a second. Blend this a little bit before I add it into the actual, um, uh, wet ingredients. So right now I'm going to add these into the wet ingredients and okay, I've got all of the dry ingredients in there. Now what I'm going to do is mix it all together you want it to be very smooth before you put it in to actually the pan, the glass pan. And then we'll add at the very end, we'll add the nuts. And if you're allergic to nuts, actually, 
uh, you don't want to do that. I want to also, in the end, um, add the one teaspoon of vanilla to it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to add the vanilla, one teaspoon of vanilla into it. And hold on. One teaspoon. I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. We've already put our milk and all of the other ingredients in. So that's one teaspoon of vanilla. And that gives it a wonderful flavor. I think you're going to love this persimmon. It tastes really, actually persimmons are sweet. So it's not like you think it is. Okay, now we're done mixing it, right? And we will put this in the bowl here. And then we will pour the batter into, or we're going to put the nuts in first. And that, they called for a lot of nuts. And if you don't like nuts, don't put nuts in it. You could actually, and these are chopped nuts, you could actually put craisins or anything else you want into it. But I like walnuts, and that's what that is. That's one cup of walnuts. And we'll blend that into the mix. And you'll see maybe pieces of the persimmon. You can see the orange in it. All right. So here we go. Looks good to me. And we're going to cook this in a 400 degree oven, which I preheated already, for 50 minutes, 55 -0. Some recipes call for 55. Check it out before you take it out by inserting, you know, a toothpick in it. But this makes a lot. Now we're ready to put this in the oven. It's in the, the uh, eight inch pan and it will come out looking like this. It'll be about maybe an inch, an inch and a half tall when it's done. And it's a very moist type of cake pudding, pudding cake. So we're gonna put it in for 55 minutes, 50 to 55 minutes because everybody's oven and I have a gas oven, um, you just have to watch it. Okay, we'll do that right now. It's ready to go, it's ready to go into the oven. And I'm going to take this out and put this over here. And the next thing that we're going to do after this is we are going to actually, I think I heard the, the uh, pressure cooker. Um, so we're going to take a break and we'll be right back and we're going to be making our salad, looking at our wonderful beef stew, but we're going to make a salad first. We'll be right back. We're back and we're going to release the pressure now and it's gonna do this for about 10 minutes. So, and you don't open it up until after the 10 minutes. So I am going to open it. So I'm gonna open the valve and you can see it and you can hear it. It's making, and you can see the steam on it. And then when it's done, it'll release all of it and it won't do that any longer. So we'll just wait until that's finished. And in the meantime, we'll take a break and I will get everything ready for our salad, and then we'll be able to show you everything. All right, we'll be right back. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and we're making a romaine apple sherry uh, with wonderful Parmesan, uh, Asiago and Parmesan cheese salad to go with our stew and our persimmon pudding cake. So um, actually we're gonna take um, about half of this onion, and I'm going to cut this onion really thin, okay, because I'm going to add the sherry and the sherry vinegar and the apple sherry vinegar to this, to this, and you're going to have to let it sit for 15 minutes. So we're going to put it in this white container, and you're going to let it sit for, like I said, 15 minutes. So it soaks up the sherry, and then you'll go ahead and make the rest of your salad. Okay, it's really simple salad, really pretty, and you just want something different uh, because the stew is kind of heavy, and so you want a light salad. You don't want a heavy salad. So I'm putting this in here, and oh boy, is this, this onion is really strong. So, but red onions tend to be, and I love onions. They're so good, and they're good for you. So that should do it. That's about enough. And then I'm going to add um, two tablespoons of um, 
of this wonderful um, vinegar. And I'm going to add a little sherry to it, too. Just a second. So we're going to put that on. And this is from T Temecula, California. And I just love it. Okay, and then we'll add a little bit of sherry. Just wait a second. Here's the sherry. And we're going to add that to it. And you can smell that. Woo! That's that. So, this is a big salad, actually. It calls for eight cups of romaine, chopped up romaine lettuce. So we'll let that sit for about 15 minutes, and we'll be back after the 15 minutes is up. We'll be right back. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and now we're going to actually put all the ingredients and in, whisk it together, cut up our romaine lettuce, add in our onions and our cheese. So we need this large bowl, and we're going to use, actually, um, two table, three tablespoons of olive oil. One, two, and three. And then our sherry, our sherry vinegar. And I'm going to add a little of that uh, apple vinegar to it too. Just one tablespoon. That should do it. Okay. And then what we need to do is we actually need to add our mustard, which just a second, I have to get the Dijon mustard out. One teaspoon of Dijon mustard. So one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Sorry, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Add a little. I'm sorry about that. So you add it all in together. And you could add a little bit more of the oil if you wanted to. But you want to mix this up. Add a little bit more olive oil to it. Okay. And then you add in your cheese, a fourth of a cup of your cheese that you're going to use. I like a lot of cheese myself. Okay. And then you just mix that all together. Okay. And then you want to add, you want to then um, actually, you want to add the lettuce and gently toss it. So I need to cut up my lettuce real quick and we'll do that. And instead of doing eight cups of lettuce, we're, we're going to half that because there's just the two of us tonight. Okay. So we don't, we want to do that real quick. So this is the romaine lettuce. You want to do that. I'm going to do about three or four of them because you could always save it as well. Okay. So, and then you're going to add your onions to that. And some crayon, I, I like crayon raisin, so that would be really good. So here's this, put that in there, and then we're going to mix that all together in a second, okay? And this is really a nice salad to go with the beef stew. We're going to show you all of it as soon as we get this done. We'll show everything to you that we've made, and I think you're going to really enjoy this meal, at least... I know I will. So here's another one. See, that's almost that's almost eight cups right there. So we'll do one more that we have right here. And let's do this. And then I'm going to add some chives to it because I love chives. And you can also add more cheese if you want to, too, which I'm going to do. But I'm going to add the craisins into it as well. Okay, that should do it. So, right, we'll just use a little bit of chives here. Just throw that in, and then we'll throw the craisins in. We'll take a little short break here. I need to clean up, okay? We're back on Chef You and I. And you know, this has been a really easy dinner to put together for 
either a, a real cold night or even for your family. It's a great, easy recipe, didn't take long. And I think you're gonna love it. Really simple. It's the beef stew done in the hot pot and our lovely salad, which, which we made. And actually, I just wanna put a little bit more on here so that you can see it. And you can see the, all the cheese and the onions and, and the wonderful vinegar. And then our lovely persimmon pudding cake. And that's a really simple, easy dinner. All the recipes will be up on our website, The Chef You and I. Please send me your recipes. Your, our recipe will be up on there. Bon appetit and join us next time on The Chef You and I. See you soon. Thanks for joining us on the Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.